Hey, it's Cosmic Ray, the quantum mechanic. We're going to look at some new designs in vitamins. This is vitamin C. Now, if you notice, we have some oxygens. We know that vitamin C, ascorbate, because it's ionized in an aqueous solution like your blood, is a free radical scavenger. So how does it do that? When you've got oxygens that are double bound, you've got them in ethers, these will absorb free radical electrons, neutralize them. So vitamin C is also known to fight scurvy. Now scurvy was when the connective tissue, like in holding your teeth in, this is why the British were known to have bad teeth, so to speak. Well, limeys, they called them, because they'd make the guys on the boats eat lime, give them the vitamin C, the connective tissue, the first signs would be their teeth falling apart. So fighting scurvy, vitamin C is known for. But look at the molecule. If you can remember it, I've seen it as a musketeer. We'll draw it as Zorro. The oxygens give the sword type structure to it. This will give a little, uh, you know, a little cover his eyes so you don't know who he is, right? <laughs> we got a double bond. This is a penta, five-membered ring with an oxygen in it. Looks just like the ribose ring. We're going to start seeing a lot of similarities where these molecules can be precursors from other molecules. But vitamin C, when I drew the cartoon for this, I learned, look at all the oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six oxygens. There's only one, two, three, four, five carbons on there. I didn't even realize that. So this is the power of the cartoon characters for the molecules, because we're going to see vitamin C is going to be more recognized. So ascorbate is the ionized form, because what's going to happen is these oxygens are actually going to be in an alcoholic form which means the acid that's originating in the name of it is actually on this lone oxygen hanging out on the end. They would draw a hydrogen on there, which is really a proton. So when this goes, it's going to leave a negative charge on there that ionizes it, makes it more dissolved in water. As you come along here, too, these two legs down here are going to be protonated. So these are OH, they call them alcohol groups. Usually, since the protons are so tiny and the hydrogen, I've just drawn the big structure of this all together, is going to show that the legs that these are on, this double bond is the only thing that makes it different from the ribose and DNA or RNA. So the OH, the alcohol's here. You've got an alcohol out there. When an oxygen's in the middle, that's called an ether. So we've got an ether on the sword arm. We've got a double bonded, it's called a ketone for all you organic chemists that like the naming scheme. When you've got a ketone, a double bonded oxygen out there, if it's on the end of a chain, like out there, it's called an aldehyde. And this seemed boring when I was studying organic chemistry, but this is where when you get glucose, sugar, you got an aldehyde on the end, it's that double bonded oxygen that you see here creates a little plus on that carbon. So this is how enzymes and other things like water can come in and break the sugars up in these reactions. So vitamin C, beautiful molecule. I love a double bonded carbon in the ring. You got an ether in the arm. You got an ether in the ring. You've got a ketone in the ring. You got two alcoholics in the ring. The ring is full. Right? Is there anything in this ring that isn't being utilized to the fullest? Double bond, double bond, single bond, but it's bonded to an oxygen. An ether, just a regular carbon in there, alcohol on the end. Beautiful. So now with the cartoon character, I just find it a lot easier to see, to understand, and I think to remember. So here he is. The vitamin C musketeer. Next we have vitamin D3. Vitamin E it is. I'm sorry. You're going to start seeing some similarities to some of these molecules later. 
Vitamin E has another name, alpha tocopherol. Now what you're going to find is there's a lot of little side chain things that could be hanging off, like here's a methyl inside, here's another oxygen in the ring. So different side groups, you've got an alcohol up here on the ear, these are methyls hanging off the edge here. So this guy kind of looks like a spiker, uh, Ozzy Osbourne rocker, punk rocker I guess, put some earrings on him, but see he's got like spiked hair I think, so he looks kind of cool. A double ring, this is a benzene aromatic ring, these are cool when they're aromatic, okay? So you got the benzene with an alcohol hanging off, you've got methyls, again this ring is totally utilized. There's not a single one on there that's not being used. The two that aren't having side groups have a double bond. This ring looks kind of uneventful, just an oxygen on there. But the methyl hanging off here, you've got different side groups that can create the family of vitamin E. So there's one that's the alpha because that's the most popular, most used structure for it. But there's a family of vitamin E's. You have alpha, beta, gamma, and deltas. They're all called tocopherols. And there's four of the main ones, and these are fat-soluble vitamins. Remember the other ones before we were talking about that are ionized? That means they'll be taken up in water, they can dissolve, travel through the blood. These are ones that are fat-soluble, vitamin E. So vitamin E is going to go through your lymph system when you eat it to absorb it. Fat-soluble and ionized are two different. So the vitamin B classes you're going to find are the ones that were water soluble. So the other ones that were getting their own letter designations were A, E, D, B, C, they didn't know happened to be water soluble. So B, C are water soluble. A, D, E, these are fat soluble. So let's take a closer look here. Now remember, these are precursors to other molecules. So one of the ones, the retinol I see listed here, is one that's used in your eye. So these are going along your beta carotenes again. These are going to be long fat chains. So let's look at this here, just at the top group here. Does he look like a punk rocker? Here he's got the groups on it, so it's more like he's got the curlers in her hair here. Let's go to the spike dude on the other side here. Let's see what his hair is like. Do we list all these side groups? There we go. So here he is with just the side groups. Get our little magnifying glass out of the way. So again, whenever the aromatic ring, draw a little face in there. I mean, now you know it's aromatic. This ring, there's nothing to it, but you can just see there's an oxygen on there. These, they don't put it because it's just taken for granted that methyl is the most common organic side chain there is. So when you see a line with nothing on the end, CH3. CH3, OH, that's the alcohol group, CH3. So this ring, remember when it's aromatic, it's going to be flat. So these are hanging off, planar they call it, sitting flat out in space. You've got methyl, methyl, OH. Methyl. So if there's any part that's going to get dissolved in water, it would have to be the OH. Now when you see the O here, you've got to remember the electrons are out here. So there's going to be a negative portion to this. Anything positive comes around that. Anything that's going to break that ring open is going to come by and work off that oxygen. Now the fat we were talking about is going to be this long side chain here. I don't actually know how long it is because we're going to see some of them can go 20 carbons long. Now if you could see the color coding on this that I did, I don't know if it'll show up too well here. These side chain fat strands, strings, whatever you want to call them, chains they call them, come in fives. They're called the isoprenes. That's when there's a double bond, the prenes. But look here, you'll see in chains of fives, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Go down, there's going to be another five. So looking off here, line with nothing on it, that's a methyl. Up here, I drew it in because this is a critical point for enzymes that are detecting this. There's a methyl right there hanging off where the ring meets. So these are cool molecules to look at in three dimensions. 
So if you see the red